Act 1, Scene 2. The light gets warmer. He sits. The nurse enters the square. Nurse. Mr. Salomon to see you, Doctor. Dysart. Show her in, please. The nurse leaves the office and crosses to where Hester sits. Some days I blame Hester. She brought him to me. But of course that's nonsense. What is he but a last straw? A last symbol? If it hadn't been him, it would have been the next patient. Or the next. At least I suppose so. Hester enters the square. A woman in her mid-forties. Hester! Hello, Martin. Dysart runs and kisses her on the cheek. Madam Chairman! Welcome to the torture chamber. It's good of you to see me right away. You're welcome relief. Take a couch. It's been a day? No, just a 15-year-old schizophrenic. And a girl of eight thrashed into catatonia by her father. Normal, really. You're on a state. Martin, this is the most shocking case I've ever tried. Or so you said on the phone. I mean it. My bench warned me to send the boy to prison. For life, if they could manage it. It took me two hours of solid arguing to get him sent to you instead. Me? I mean, to hospital. N now look, Hester. Before you say anything else, I can't take no more patients at the moment. I can't even cope with the ones I have. You must. Why? Because people are starting are going to be disgusted by the whole thing. Including doctors. May I remind you that I share this room with two highly competent psychiatrists. Bennett and Thorogood. They'll be shocked as the public. That's an absolutely unwarrantable statement. Oh, they'll be cool and exact. And underneath, they'll be revolted. And immovably English. Just like my bench. Well, what am I? Polynesian. You know exactly what I mean. Please, Martin. It's vital. You're this boy's only chance. Why? What has he done? Coast some little girl's Pepsi with Spanish fly? What could he possibly throw your bench into a two-hour conversation? He blinded six horses with a metal spike. A long pause. Dysart. Blinded. Hester. Yes. All at once or over a period? All on the same night. Where? In a riding stable near Winchester. He worked there at weekends. How old? Seventeen. What did he say in court? Nothing. He just sang. Sang? Any time anyone asked him something. Pause. Hester. Please take him, Martin. It's the last favour I'll ever ask you. Dysart. No. It's not. No, it's not. And he's probably abominable. I, all I know is he needs you badly. Because there really is nobody within a hundred miles of your desk who can handle him. And perhaps understand what this is about. Also. What? There's something very special about him. In what way? Vibrations. Oh, you and your vibrations. They're quite startling. You'll see. When does he get here? Tomorrow morning. Luckily, there was a bed in the Neville ward. I know this is an awful imposition, Martin. Frankly, I don't know what else to do. Pause. Dysart. Can you come in and see me on Friday? Hester. Bless you! If you come in right after work, I can give you a drink. Will 6.30 be all right? Oh, you're a dear. You really are. I'm famous for it. Goodbye. By the way, what's his name? Alan Strang. She leaves and returns to her seat. Dysart to the audience. What did I expect of him? Very little, I promise you. One more dented little face. One more adolescent freak. The usual unusual. One great thing about being in the adjustment business, you're never short of customers. The nurse comes down the tunnel, followed by Alan. She enters the square. Nurse. Alan Strang, doctor. The boy comes in. Dysart. Hello. My name's Martin Dysart. I'm pleased to meet you. He puts out his hand.
and Alan doesn't respond in any way. Dysart. That'll be all, nurse. Thank you.